Hello again. So Jamb is not going to give you a scientific calculator. The kind of calculator you're going to get in your exam is a basic, non-scientific, the type I call the market women kind of calculator that has just basic operations like plus, minus, division, and subtraction. But you might have come across questions, maybe during the process of practicing past questions, questions that look like they require scientific calculators to solve. But the reality is that most of this question if not all of them do not actually require a scientific calculator all the questions you're ever going to come across i genuinely believe they do not require scientific calculators you just need to know how to go about it you know you just need to find your ways around this calculations i know that scientific calculators can make solving extremely fast but you do not need them and in this video i'm going to be sharing how how you can use the basic calculator you have to increase your solving speed and even accuracy you're welcome back to the channel if you are new here i'm worth i'm currently a 50 medical cent of ui and on this channel i make videos about medicine admission and personal development so make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss any video on this channel and please like this video and share it with someone you also think might find it helpful so let's go into the video the first tip is to not practice with the scientific calculator because of course you're not going to get one in the exam so in the process of practicing and preparing for the exam please use the basic kind of calculator and in the process you'll be forced to learn how to find your ways around it if you've been practicing without the scientific calculator all this while during your preparation then this video is almost not going to be useful for you except to just gain some extra tips because during all this process you would have figured out by yourself different ways to manipulate different numbers and different mathematical operations so the second tip is to learn basic math operations and i'm saying this it's funny i'm saying this but i'm saying this from my experience because i've been a classroom teacher before i've taught physics in classroom and maybe after teaching my students a new topic they know the formula they know how to get the answer then i'll notice that they follow all the normal steps they were meant to follow use the right formula but still end up getting the answer wrong and then i'll notice that what they got wrong are basic mathematical operations like something as simple as board mass is what they really don't know so if you are not taking anything away from this video have board mass at the back of your mind that anytime you're solving any operation any math operation you should always follow board mass you should always do the bracket first of division before you get to the addition and subtraction take this question for example 9 plus 1 times 10 someone might say 9 plus 1 is 10 10 times 10 is 100 but that is not correct you know the correct answer is that you have to do the multiplication first because multiplication comes before addition in the board mass so it's supposed to be 1 times 10 is 10 then you now say 10 plus 9 is 19 so you see someone is going to get 100 someone else is going to get a 19 if you put this thing directly into a scientific calculator scientific calculator is going to actually give you 19 which is the correct answer so if you've been dependent on scientific calculator you might have not learned board mass which is going back to the previous tip so basic mathematical operation if you don't know anything please know how to do board mass the next tip is to learn indices and standard form this is very important like when i was preparing for this kind of exam myself the knowledge of indices and standard form was extremely helpful i learned how to convert fractions to like a standard form right and i also learned how to manipulate indices you know for example if you have to solve an equation that is like 2 times 10 raised to the power minus 15 times 4 times 10 raised to the power minus 10 it doesn't like the calculator the basic calculator you have you cannot even impute that into the calculator talk more of using it to solve that kind of question so you need your knowledge of indices to know that okay if it is 10 raised to power minus something times 10 raised to power something else you know that since it is times that is joining the two bases and the bases are equal we can just pick the power of the two bases and add them together like i'm showing on the screen so that way you're going to be able to solve a question quickly without trying to you know even if you are the scientific calculator and you're trying to use scientific calculator for that kind of question someone that is not using the calculator but understands indices and standard form is going to be able to solve it faster than you tip, tip number four is to learn to manipulate decimals and fractions you should at least know how to convert a decimal number to a fraction because 
Sometimes just converting the number to a fraction can make the manipulation of that number easy. For example, in this question, if I'm trying to solve this particular question, the first thing I'm going to do is to convert 0 0.25 from a decimal to a fraction. So I'm, it's going to become 25 over 100. I know this decimal point moves twice to the back. That gives me over 100, right? And then from there, I can solve this question and I'm going to get x equals to minus half tip number five is to know the square root of perfect squares up to 169 of end this is going to be very easy for you if you've at once learned the multiplication table you know in primary school we were forced to learn two times one two up to like 12 times i know that what i'm telling you to really know is that if you hear square root of 100 you should know it is 10. square root of 144 you should know it is 12 square root of 81 you should know it is 9 because 9 times 9 is 81 square root and so on like that like at least up to 169 this can also save you time during the process of solving your question tip number six is to know the trigonometric value of some major angles like 30 45 60 if you don't want to know anything else know know the strings because you're not going to get a calculator where you can put sine 60 or sine 30 but you can see a few questions where you'll be required to do sine 30 but they believe i mean they, you it is unlikely for them to give you sine 179 which you are definitely going to need a scientific calculator for most of the time if they want you to actually calculate it they're going to give you sine of like trigonometric function of basic angle so i remember during my time i learned i memorized some common ones like sine 30 equals to 0.5 then tan 45 is equal to 1. You know, cos 30 equals to root 3 over 2. Like, you are going to get question. In fact, I'm going to put a question on the screen that requires this knowledge. And I want you to attempt it. And the last tip, which is actually reiterating the first tip I said, is to practice a lot and develop your own strategies to solve questions fast. Like, if you've practiced, if you've been practicing, and I also encourage you to keep practicing without a scientific calculator, you are going to develop your own strategies to solve questions fast without relying on a scientific calculator so that's going to be the end of the video i hope you found this one also helpful if you did make sure you like the video and share it with someone you think might also find it helpful and yeah don't also forget to subscribe if you are not subscribed and i will see you in the next one bye bye